Thor 3D movie thoughts. So other than Heimdall, of course, being the magical black person, you know, that movie trope of the black character who helps selflessly the white protagonist as I'm shattering this review. Other than that, is it just a little strange how he's apparently big brother of Asgard? And also, was that detail at all evident in the film before they flat out stated? You know, suddenly they just say, oh, remember, you know, Heimdall can hear and see everything. Oh, right, we totally didn't know that. Thanks for delivering exposition for the benefit of the audience. But then he immediately has seen and heard. If he can do that, how did he not know about, you know, the frost giants before they, you know, killed what might have been Asgardian guards, whatever. Maybe this is nitpicking, but I personally found it a little bit confusing how half the time they called him guard or guardian and the other half the time they called him Heimdall. I was like, okay, are they talking about the same person, or what? I personally think it was a bit of a problem that the ice giants were pretty much introduced to be just kind of evil, you know? Pretty... Yeah, not a lot of... nuance there. I'm not saying that's a problem for a villain. I'm saying that's a problem when you suddenly decide that you want your villain to be sympathetic because suddenly it is a problem. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm for genocide, but if these are purely evil creatures, how are we supposed to sympathize with their destruction as moviegoers? You know, you have to kind of establish that there's maybe, you know, and maybe not all of them are warriors. Maybe many of them are just, you know, regular uh, giants, I guess. Establish that, please. That would, that would really help. I also think that the Asian Asgardian was really unnecessary, because he's basically just Captain Exposition. He's not even that. He's Captain Obvious. Every single line, and I'm pretty sure that this is the case, is him stating the obvious. Every single... You know, it's like, oh no, Heimdall apparently can't hear us, so we're trapped here. Yeah. Everyone knew that, including the audience. Thanks, though. Nice. Like, the only thing he does is fight in the opening scene and help toss Fat Punisher towards, you know, blandy, shiny, bad breath dude. I liked Sif okay, although, again, not that much, you know, didn't do that much. The motivation of Loki. In fact, maybe I should start with just the whole... the way he carried himself, the way he spoke, the way he appears from behind a column, gradually stepping down the stairs towards Thor. Spot on. You know, you can just tell, and then he starts talking, and every word, just the manipulation is just right there. And we can tell, but Thor falls for it, you know, every time. And then only near the very end does he realize, look, he's been lying to me, you know. It was, you know, like, obviously Loki's plan to cause this, you know, to have Thor banished. And then, you know, just the whole thing with, you know, oh, no, no, Thor, I agree with you. But the only way you could do, oh, no, no, you shouldn't do that. No, don't do that. You know, it's so obvious. And because he knows Thor, you know, they grew up together. He knows the moment the thought is in Thor's head. 
he's going to follow it. And that's the entire problem. That's why he needs to go to Earth. He needs to learn humility. He needs to learn perspective, you know. If a ruler does not understand the needs of the very lowest under his command, and from this film apparently that is human beings, then he will not be a good ruler. You know, if he's only seen the inside of the palace, he will not be a good ruler. And it's that classic adventure tale of the young, brash man who had, boy almost, who has to go out into the real world, go out, leave his home, become a man, you know, survive the real world, then return home, take over his father's place, you know. I think that really worked because that is, you know, Mythology is these, you know, tales that you have to draw a moral from, and it just worked really well. And Loki's motivation, you know, when, when he says, I don't even want the throne, I never wanted your throne, I just wanted to be your equal, you know, and there's, there's the self-hatred in that he realizes now he is one of the ice giants. And he tries to destroy their entire, you know, species, their entire world. You know, it's, it's the self-hatred. It's that he feels like he isn't good enough, but he can't change what he is. He can't change how he was born. So he projects it and tries to attack something else, also to kind of prove himself, you know. See, I'm not like them because I can destroy them. And if they're not there, because they're the ones you fear, I'm not the one you fear. If I destroy them, then you won't have any reason to fear me, you know. It's this sick, twisted kind of logic. And, again, it is, you know, it could be from an old story, a really old story. I suppose that's more or less what there is to say. I like that they keep it open at the end about Bifrost, the magical bridge apparently constructed from the same material as the sidewalk in Billie Jean. I like that it's not clear if they can rebuild it, you know. Heimdall says no. There's... It's not for sure that you've lost contact with her. And that, you know, Earth is now off limits. And also the, the sacrifice, you know. He sacrifices his life, Thor, and then he sacrifices, you know, his love for, you know, other people, for the majority, and that is, again, you know, that is a hero, and that is a leader, you know, make the difficult decision, and, you know, whereas in, you know, we see the kind of decision he makes early on, that don't work out so well, you know, a lot of dead uh, ice giants, big thumbs up for showing us Odin on the eight-legged horse, Beautiful. Just, yeah, absolutely. Didn't care for changing the, the loss of an eye to being seemingly from battle, you know, off screen, but it's hinted at because he's got two eyes when he starts the battle. And then, okay, this film does go by the idea of him being a wise man. His wisdom comes from you know, the loss of his one eye. Now, before, just put down the fork. Okay. It's because he trades one of his eyes to drink from... I don't know how to pronounce this in English, so I'm just going to try. Mimer, or something like that. His well of wisdom. The only way to do that is, yeah, to trade and I, and that is why Odin is so wise, or at least part of it. I suppose that's about what there is, so, you know, if you want my opinion on anything I didn't cover here, down below.